when 9-11 happened and I watched it, it seemed pretty obvious to me. I mean, it, it still seems obvious to me, but the towers came down like that under 10 seconds. How is it possible for a plane to hit a tower in the top, blow up whatever it does, set some fires to whatever it does, uh, its engine fires only go, it, the fuel, the kerosene only burns so high, and you've still got this building underneath, fully developed, one of the strongest buildings in the world, one of the most advanced architectures in the world, built to withstand planes, built to withstand pretty much anything that's going to happen in the realm of life in a big city. <clears throat> and all of a sudden they drop free fall speed. How does that physically happen? There's only one way for it to happen and it to be a controlled demolition. It's the only way. But people, they get mesmerized. They get so hyped about the significance of what is occurring that the United States, New York City, the trade towers, the most important buildings in some ways in the world are destroyed. The most powerful nation, one of their greatest symbols, destroyed, blown up, just taken out. Like this is massive and the media is, is every media on the planet was just like on it at the same time. Uh, how'd that happen? All saying the same thing, all reporting in kind of like the same way. So when you're watching it back then, and there's some people, they weren't old enough to, to know this was going on in a sense. Everyone, the whole world was glued to the TV screens and to whatever was available in terms of the media for months in a sense, it was the number one story. And yet there was a third building that came down, building seven, that later we found out came down in under, I think seven seconds. And they say, oh yeah, well, there was some debris from the buildings or fires and gravity, same story as for the other two buildings. And building seven, you know, isn't talked about much because again, another impossible thing. It's just impossible for this building to come down in under 10 seconds uh, without it being controlled demolition, which it was, which means all three buildings were rigged to blow before, which means it was an inside job, which means the wars were started as a false flag. I mean, this is just the way it is can't deny this. So looking at COVID, what happens is at the beginning or, or during it, there's the same media, constant repetition. And if you repeat a lie long enough, it becomes the truth to everyone. They prove that in propaganda over and over again. So here we have this same scenario almost 20 years later, uh, a different scenario, but it's it's got the same taste. It's got the same sense. It's like, okay, they're, they're doing it again, but now they're doing it globally. I mean, they prepped us over the years with the last one, I think being SARS, but they were prepping us for this, you know, for 20 or 30 years, something like this just doesn't come out of the bag. I mean, th these things are delivered beautifully by these band of insane psychopaths. You know, I call them the freaking nutballs and they would be over here in the enemy category, like to the entire species. Like we're over here. We're kind of members, allies and customers. We're in the kind of good side over here. You and me and all the good people on the planet, all the people who want nice things, all the people real life, all the people who don't want to go attack another country and steal all their shit and pretend that someone else is doing something when it isn't them doing it. Like, come on. So here we are. We're in a, an end game scenario. And that's something you kind of got to get. And if you don't get that, you're not tracking this and you're just like, dum -de dum 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 Well, you're in the category of asleep. But let me just uh, bring in another little map for you. So up here, we have a sleep. And uh, that's where a lot of people are. They're asleep. They're asleep to the situation. They're asleep to their spiritual side of life. They're asleep to the great, greater political mechanisms that are going on right now because they haven't been tracking it. And they're totally lost in the norm of the corporate media and the spins that they've been giving us for all these years, our, our, our entire lives, basically. 
at some point you awaken to it. But, but awakening, it takes some time sometimes. It's not just like getting up in the morning and you're like, nah. sometimes it takes years to sort of wake and go, oh, 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 that's what's going on. Because you, you can't take the norm or what you've been taught or what, what people are repeating as the consensus reality. There, there's something more, there's something much more going on. And if you don't do your own research and you don't do your own work, both spiritually and politically, you're going to be kind of a, eh, eh, you know, again, in this category, or maybe even the mind control zombie. Like some, some, like there's this, uh, if you notice the trend over the last like 10, 15 years around zombie movies and zombie shows and all the zombies that showed up. And before this, the, the zombies weren't, weren't so prolific. But now it's like, again, the futurizing, they're always futurizing us to, to believe that something is going to happen and that it has to happen. And that's how they win. It's one of their biggest strategies is they control the media and all the movies, the government is some uh, huge organization that can never be beaten, that is always in control, that is just going to create this horrible future for us uh, because the, the, the masses, us, the public, us, do nothing. And so if I'm going to do anything to anybody, like we have to sort of begin to assert ourselves in terms of the freedom movement or in terms of every human being going, you know, you've gone too far. It was fine for a while. We could ignore you. We could still live our lives. But now you're, you're, you've gone too far. I mean, entering the marijuana market is probably like the worst thing for us. But now you're trying to control our movement. Now you're trying to, 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 to do things to our kids that are just horrible if you really look at them. And uh, you say it's all in the name of safety and health. Uh, when you don't give to a rat's ass for our safety or health, then you show that over and over again. And then you bring out another lie and you bring out another sort of uh, production we're supposed to buy. And I'm just going to start to speak up a little bit more because people aren't speaking up enough. But I know that most of you know what I'm talking about. And most of you are on, let's say, our side in terms of conscious human beings that want something good for everyone that sees that the, the current uh, banking ways with usury and interest on interest and uh, the mortgage, the death grip, and all of these things which we have assumed to be, oh, this is the way it is, when in fact it isn't the way it is. It's just this scam after scam after scam after scam, and now this parasite is just sucking the lifeblood out of the people, as it always does in that kind of hierarchical scam of getting the people to believe something that isn't true. And so that's something I will come back to again and again, in a sense of you have to take back the reins of your mind. You have to sort of believe and know that your inner intuition is far more advanced than any external authority and that you have the power of your own choice. You have the power to connect to this universal uh, energy that's like the force, the God force, the greater intelligence, uh, whatever name you want to give it. I mean, it, it has a pretty bad rap in the normal media that if you're spiritual, or you're thinking about God, or you're thinking about any type of religious or spiritual matters, that you're a wacko and that the normal sort of media is always downplaying uh, the truth of a real spiritual connection and what it does to the person and what it does to the family or the community or the nation. There's a strength there that cannot be beaten. But if you add in this violent aspect or the, or the, uh, the, the, the past of these religious or spiritual organizations trying to take each other over or kill each other, I mean, that kind of goes against the whole point of, let's say, spirituality, in my opinion, where uh, you're trying to be more loving, more kind, more conscious, higher spiritual attributes that do not go into the realm of trying to screw someone over, steal their shit, and do violent shit while you're doing it. So, you got to understand that the normal corporate media and all these movies and shows are run by the same people at the end of the day and they're put in forth. And I know there's independence and I know there's shows that aren't. I'm just saying in general, if you're looking at the overall narrative and storylines and characters, and there's always this violence and there's always this, this, this uh, sort of uh, um, betrayals and, and, and humans always at each other. And there isn't a hell of a lot of stuff about humans being loving and cooperative and things going really well because of it for everybody. So they don't want to portray a different type of lifestyle. They don't want to portray humans 
um, being in uh, high virtue and being in high morality uh, without the need for an external authority to do so. And so you're your own internal sort of good character where we're all monitoring ourselves personally. And if you're in a, a group or community of conscious human beings, they're seeing you. They, they are seeing you and that is more monitoring than most people need, right? We don't need cops. We don't need all these um, external paid uh, parasites to suck the lifeblood out of all of us. No, we can figure some things out on our own. And if we're just left to, we would. And humans have the ability to transcend the insanity of the society they're in. And so that's what's happening now where there's a lot of beautiful, amazingly incredible beings like the spiritual masters, the awakened beings, the ones who know who they are, the ones who are on their spiritual purpose, the ones who are, 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 are ready to bring their gifts into the world in a totally different way than has been done in the past. The focus is on the individual and their gifts, not the focus on some commodity or product that can be controlled and manipulated. And so only a few people can make be super rich and everyone else is just fucked. Like who wants to participate in this? We need to build a whole new system, right? I mean, isn't this the primary choice that's happening right now? Like, do you want the, the red pill or do you want the blue pill? It's your choice. We are, we are in the present moment, always. And then we're choosing towards whether we look to the future or whether we look towards the past or whether we're present here in this present moment. Like, we're normally in patterns. Our mind is organized by patterns. And so when these patterns become habits that you never consciously look at or examine or understand, then you're lost, you're asleep, you're, uh, you're, you're not participating with the full range that a human being has. And so there's a huge difference between, you know, living in a world of love versus living in a world of fear. And right now, there's such a propagation of fear. There's such a, uh, a manipulation of the minds of all the masses to believe certain things that, again, that are not true or most likely have been twisted or warped in such a manner to create an, a, an, a, a sort of interpretation of reality that isn't that good for the individual. And it isn't that good for us as a society, but it is being manipulated by the freaking nutballs who are always remained, remaining hidden. They're always in the backgrounds, not wanting to be identified. And they can put their politicians and their corporations and all these other sort of uh, walls or veils to hide them. But behind the scenes, we all know there are individuals and families that have control of the world's economic system in, in ways that uh, we do not know of. And to me, I don't have to know who they are. And I don't have to know how they're doing it. All I have to know is they exist. And if I look at this whole paradigm, I look at the whole economic system and go, you know what? This is rigged. This is rigged for multiple generations. And if you think that you're going to, let's say, succeed or get ahead of the game, or create a lifestyle that is really going to be good for you in there, in that methodology, I just, I question that. I know it can be done, and I know there are people who are doing that, but if you look at the whole system, what's happening, there's a kind of a responsibility at the higher levels of, let's say, manifestation to the rest of the species, because, you know, all of these things were built, the infrastructure was built through generally the theft and, and enslavement of other human beings. And so if, if we are going to evolve as a species, we have to get to the point of a, you know, a unilateral prime reference point of the individual human rights for all beings, all humans and species on this planet. And we have to figure out a way for us all to sort of get along. And in order to do so, uh, we have to sort of understand where we have come from to get to where we want to go. And if we don't understand this and we don't deal with it in a wise way, it, it will obliterate us because this paradigm is deadly. 
And this paradigm attacks that which is foreign to it or it wants its own destruction. So if you want to go to this new paradigm, essentially you want this to die. So there is a war here. But the difference in methodologies of how you conduct yourself over here versus here is very different and is what distinguishes you in the long run about where you're going to play and who you want to play with. And basically, I mean, <laughs> every human being wants more joy, more bliss, more love, more touching, more sex, more interaction, more connection, more deep seated feelings of appreciation versus uh, fear of everything and uh, always on the run and always thinking that someone is going to screw you and always feeling negative and depressed and blah, 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 you know, which one do you want? It's pretty obvious, right? So in order to get these humans together, that's what the very secret plan is. That's what part of what I'm working on. And, and I, I'm sure there's hundreds of thousands or millions of people across the planet who are working on it now too. And how do we get together to build this paradigm? Everyone has gifts. We all have gifts which we can offer. And the gifts what I have are maps, card sets, game boards, processes, and software, all connected into something called the new paradigm toolkit, which is methodology to bring people from this old paradigm into the new paradigm to design your ideal job, to design your ideal organization, to design your ideal community, and then have it in the future as a design you're working towards that you get agreements with other people to go into that future together and change the timeline, change the nature of your progression into the future into something with more consciousness, more design, more understanding, more love, more of the conscious value systems that you choose as being your own methodology to live your life and go forward into this designed future that you want. I know I'm saying a lot and you might wonder about the garb and you might wonder about the funny maps. And I just like to say that I believe that we all have a superhero within ourselves. And those superheroes don't dress the way everyone else does. And when you're stepping into your superhero nature, you leave behind the norms of society. You leave behind whatever's in the old paradigm and how it sees you. And you say to the world, I am here and I am a creative individual and I'm gonna dress the way I want all the time. That's what stars do. Stars are always dressing weird and different and you know, star walks into a room and they're just like audacious. They are beauty in motion. And so we're all like that. We can be, but we're also limited by our society's dress standards and sort of like jeans, t-shirt and a, and a baseball hat, you know, becomes the norm. And then everyone stays within the norm. And, and if anyone's outside the norm, they just get attacked. And it's, we need to honor the artist. We need to honor the creativity that we have. We need to honor that because in every community, the new things that come out, the new ideas, the new products, the new inventions are all done by artists. Artists are where everyone watches what the artist is doing at some point because the artist is in connection with their spirit. They're connected to the universe. You know, this, this energy, creative energy is moving through them and they're just directing it. And when you understand that and live that, you know, it's like this beam of light coming out, you know, it's, it's like we're energetic beings and we can connect into a larger energetic field if we organize our minds in such a manner that we're in alignment with it. You know, the math, the numbers are really important. And, and if, you, if you don't know this and if it isn't part of your design, you're missing out on, on this massively <clears throat> intricate, beautiful, poetic uh, structure of the universe that you can believe in God or not, but something underneath this has an intelligence way beyond what we can conceive of. And yet we can connect to it. And when you connect to it, 
it's like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> oh my God, you know, how, how, why am I not doing this in every facet of my life? Why am I not bringing this into everything? I mean, this joy that I feel, this incredible connection, this, this, this just, this, oh my God. You know, but it's different when the frequency fences of the city, you know, the houses and the cars and the electrical grids and the lack of nature and the not walking around in your bare feet. And all of a sudden you're in this other kind of grid or matrix and you're cut off from your higher self and you're cut off from nature and you're cut off from all the stuff that makes you feel good. And if you're wondering why you don't have purpose and if you're wondering why you don't have meaning, it's because you're supporting things that don't support you. All they are are business mechanisms that just sort of take and take and take instead of participating in something that, you know, is part of your heart and part of your love and part of your, your, your everything that you love about life is streaming through you. And that is creating the lifestyle that you want to live. You know, again, like, where do you want to go? Who do you want to go with? And what is your operating system? And I'm putting forth that this thing behind me, the time translator, is a new type of operating system. It's, it's time cycles. It's looking at your lifetime and looking at your yearly cycle, looking at your lunar cycle, looking at your daily cycle and seeing them as cycles. You got this lifetime, years, lunar cycles and daily cycles. But the lunar cycles, there's 13 of them. There's not 12 months. There's 13 moon cycles. Reality is 13 moon cycles. Roman uh, tax collection is 12 months. Got to get this. Follow the money. So then if you look at the, the yellow circle, there's 20. There's 20 Mayan glyphs. This is the connection into the Mayan calendar. And their incredibly beautiful calendar system, which was kind of like wiped out by uh, the Vatican, or stolen as they took their codexes and their, their whole culture and stole it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> way to go, boys. We got the stuff. Now let's hide it under the Vatican with all the other shit we steal. And then it disappears. No one has access to it. And these motherfuckers up, up top are like, I'm the Pope and I'm in control and I got all the world shit. It's like, get off of that, man. If you're in touch with God, you'd be a little bit more generous. You know, you, you sort of share that Vatican wealth you got, but instead they hide it underneath in the tomb so that no one can get access to it. Way to go, guys. Like, that's really nice. Anyway, where was I? Okay, so we got the Mayan calendar. So we got these 20 Mayan glyphs, energetic signatures, you know, superheroes. So what this is, is the tetrahedron has four points. And when you go to the next level and put four points at those four points, you fractal into the next whole system. And that whole system has 20 parts, 16, which are the new fours, and then the original four. So you've got 20, which is the same as 20 amino acids. Like 20 has a very high significance as a number. And you got to look at numbers in this manner. Seven is different from eight. Five is different from four. When you use four to organize things versus five, it's very different. When you have five people, it's different than when you have four people. It's very different from when you have eight people. So use the right system when you're organizing those people. That's part of the very secret plan, but that's something else. Anyway, we got 20 people here, 20 people. Superhero team, five teams of four, five teams of four. Then that's in a seasonal cycle. That's where things are a little bit different. The seasons are the main reference point <clears throat> for how human beings organize. Doing something in winter, very different from doing something in the summer, right? What's the reference point? The season. So the people are organizing their creativity by season. But then at the pink, you have hours. Now we're getting into the now. Now we're getting into who you're spending your time with. They're unique. Then we go into orange at minutes. And then we have red, the present moment, now, now, now. But then we go even further into the center point, <laughs> timelessness. We have just given the mind a bridge to timelessness. Oh, I was in the present moment. I didn't even know that I could get 
Did you ever be in that flow? You're on the dance floor, the music pumping, and you got the right medicines, and you're zooming. Timelessness. You know what I'm talking about, and I know you know what I know. Mm. Anyway, that's like leaving the mind, and that's going journeying. Right? The mind is like a, it's a mechanism. It's a bridge between the soul and the outer senses. You're not your mind. Got to remember that. You're not your mind. Your mind, you're using it. It's a tool. It's an organizer. But if you don't take control of it, if you don't design it, if you don't create your inner knowledge castle, you are under the sways of those who don't have your best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. They don't. And so Captain Sweep is here to assist you to bring in tools so you can reformat your mind so you can actually design the future that you choose and have the tools and mechanisms, processes, and people to assist you into that future. Like if you're lost, you don't know what to do and you're not connecting into the old paradigm, you need something to guide you to go somewhere where you want to go. Otherwise, you're just, where are you going? You're going nowhere, man, in this old paradigm that just wants to screw you. That's not a good plan. So you get something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Captain Sweepums. And then you use that with teams, communities, planetary guardians. To take over the planet. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to tell you that part. Now I'm going to get in trouble. Oh, the old paradigm does not like Captain Sweep. They are monitoring me. They don't think that I'm going to do anything because they think I don't have an audience and they think that no one around me is listening. Sometimes I think that too. But I know that you guys are even smarter, pretending not to care, pretending not to be interested, pretending. But all the while, deep down inside, you are going, I'm with you, sweet. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm working. But I just, I'm keeping it on the down low, right? We got to keep it on the down low or else those guys get nutball. Got to do this smart. Hmm? So this is a little message. I know I'm speaking a little bit more about the plan and it's uh, because things are heating up. Fairy Creek is heating up. Uh, I see that uh, a few characters in the secret plan are starting to get closer to their prime destiny. Anyway, this is just a download from Captain Sweepums and uh, things are going well and uh, lots of good things are happening lots of things i'm not talking about which is all part of what is occurring and if you're in the plan you're in it if you're in the plan you are going to participate in so many good things so many so many anyway captain sweep out have an amazing day and look to everyone around you and see them as divine spiritual beings who are there either to test you or to assist you to bring out your greatest realization in life. And so let's just be thankful for everyone that we come across because they are part of the very secret plan and part of the unfoldment of what is occurring for you in that present moment. So bring as much love as you can, bring as much forgiveness, bring as much fun and humor and see how well that goes. Anyway, Captain Sweep loving you all. Let's change the world.